All right, so this um, model represents a number of things, the spinal cord, the CNS, the uh, vertebral column, but, but what we're going to use it for is the, uh, the uh, chain ganglia and the sympathetic thoracolumbar um, system or outflow. Um, fight or flight is initiated by, uh, if you look up here, the lateral horn of the gray matter. And so this, this bulge right there and right there is the lateral horn. This is the dorsal horn, and this is the ventral horn here and here. And so um, as, we, as we look at the structure uh, and you know, orient ourselves, there's going to be incoming and outgoing um, nerves. The ones that are coming in are, um, are unipolar sensory ner uh, neurons that are going to be synapsing or at least entering through the dorsal horn of the gray matter. And uh, as they do, they're going to synapse with multipolar association neurons and either ascend to the, in tracks up to the brain uh, or brain stem. Um, depending on the stimulus and receptor that triggered them. And then the response that's sent, sent back can either be um, directly coming down in corticospinal tracts to the ventral horn and then exiting through a ventral uh, plexi in the, uh, in the um, uh, cervical uh, enlargement and lumbosacral enlargement regions of the spinal cord that are above and below T1 to L2. Um, if it's exiting from the ventral horn of the gray matter, then it is a somatic pathway going to skeletal muscle and uh, the neuron that is exiting cell bodies, the multipolar alpha motor neurons, would be actually present in the ventral horn. However, there's four other pathways that are exiting that are motor also that are related to uh, this bulge that we see here, this lateral horn that's found from T1 to L2 and is related to a sympathetic um, innervation of structures that are involuntarily controlled and not somatic in nature. Um, as, as those neurons exit, there's going to be structures here uh, that are associated with it called chain ganglia. Uh, this um, chain ganglia is going to be uh, have, uh, as the name implies, just like the dorsal root ganglia, the cell bodies um, of the neurons that are entering or exiting the uh, spinal cord. And in this case, um, there are four specific pathways associated with this uh, overall structure of the sympathetic nervous system. Um, those four would be to leave the spinal cord's lateral horn, go out uh, and synapse in the chain ganglia, and as it exits, uh, some of the structural components here would be um, we have as we look, we have a structure here that's a pathway and one here, and these would be the gray and white rami communicantes. So um, as, as we exit the spinal cord, first of all, the, um, the neurons that are exiting are motor, motor neurons, multipolar motor neurons, but they're not alpha motor neurons like we saw in the ventral horn going to skeletal muscle. Um, however, they do travel with those alpha motor neurons, and they actually exit the spinal cord. They originate in the lateral horn, but everything exits through that ventral um, horn of the gray matter. So as they exit, um, they're going to exit either into a plexus if they're somatic, or in this case, they'll exit, uh, come out of the neuron uh, or nerve pathway, um, and either synapse in the chain ganglia, go to the same level, They'll also possibly synapse there and go up or down, depending on what organ they're innervating. They may, uh, there may only be one of them, um, a preganglionic, that would go out uh, and move through the uh, chain ganglia and directly to the adrenal medulla. Uh, and there would be one that would be going out and into a splanchnic nerve, which would then target some organ way below or way above the area that it exits. So those four represented in Lab 10's uh, picture and description uh, of the review for all of the 10 labs in this nervous unit. So you should study that, everybody. Um, as it comes out, then, these uh, pathways, would all, most of them, all but one, have a pre- and post-ganglionic neuron. And the pre-ganglionic neuron would always release acetylcholine. And the post-ganglionic, if it's sympathetic, would be releasing norepinephrine. Uh, unless it were the one that only had one of the neurons, a pre only, that went to the adrenal medulla and re caused the release of epinephrine and norepinephrine, both referred to as catecholamines uh, from that uh, medullary region of that gland. Um, those would be um, prolonging the sympathetic response if it was epinephrine, and they would be inhibiting normal function or stimulating normal function from fight or flight, uh, and we'll discuss that more. Uh, as we go through this unit on autonomics. So when we look at structurally what's going on, this is the lateral horn, one more time. This is the ventral horn where the neurons are going to exit from the lateral horn. And this is what initiates thoracolumbar outflow 
um, and stimulates the pre- and post-ganglionic neurons or structures in the line that will help to give you a sympathetic response to something that you are threatened by. So stress, stress initiates this pathway. Um, that pathway of stress um, usually is initiated because something was a threat, um, something uh, angered you, or some emotional response has occurred to some uh, stimulus that came in uh, through the various um, incoming uh, sensory information. Could, could have been anything. Could have been seeing something, hearing something, smelling something. It could have been seeing, uh, it could have been uh, a stimulus that caused, you know, you were shot, which resulted in this. There's all kinds of reasons for this pathway. But understand there is no sensory part of this pathway. It would depend on the person as to why fight or flight is initiated. So it's always outgoing, it's always multipolar motor, and it always originates lateral horn from T1 to L2. And as it exits, it'll exit from that ventral horn come out, go around past the gray ray microminicontes into the white, go through the chain ganglia, and either synapse in the chain ganglia uh, and go above, below, or at the same level, or it'll move straight through it and go down or up into a splanchnic nerve that innervates some organ above or below. Uh, the fourth option there would be its, its release, its preganglionic exit through here, out through that same pathway, and then never synapsing moves directly in. Its preganglionic neurons would move directly into the adrenal medulla, uh, which is a gland sitting on top of the kidney that releases those catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine. You should study.